This video was made in partnership with Loom Network, the next generation blockchain application platform for Ethereum. In this video, I'll show you how you can easily transfer digital assets from the Ethereum network onto a Loom dApp chain using gateways. A transfer gateway consists of three main components, one smart contract on the main net, another smart contract on the side chain, and an off-chain oracle that listens to events on both contracts. When an asset is sent to the gateway contract on the main net, an event is emitted, which is picked up by the oracle. The oracle then sends a message to the contract on the side chain, which mints a copy of that asset for use on the side chain. When you're done using that asset on the side chain, you can then withdraw that asset and the process is done in reverse. Before we go any further, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you hit that notification icon so you can stay up to date whenever I post a new video. Let's get started. The first thing you're gonna need is the Loom command line executable. You can download it using this command. Next, you can place it wherever you wish. In my case, I put it in user local bin so I can access it globally. Next, we want to download some sample code from Loom's GitHub repository. Once downloaded, we CD into that directory and then use Yarn to install dependencies. Let's have a look at the contracts we'll be deploying. First contract is an ERC-20 contract that we'll be deploying to the Rinkeby network. As you can see, it's a simple ERC-20 and it will automatically mint 1 billion tokens to the person that has deployed the contract. The second is an ERC-721 contract that we'll also be deploying to Rinkeby. The only modification we made is a convenience function for using with Web3. These next two contracts are virtually identical to the first two. The only thing is we have to implement the mint to gateway function in order for it to work on the Loom dApp chain. This allows the gateway running on the dApp chain to mint tokens to itself, then distribute those tokens to the appropriate address. Next, we'll create a private and public key for use on the Loom dApp chain. Once that's created, we can go ahead and deploy. In this case, we're using Loom's testnet, also referred to as ext dev. Next, we need to deploy our contracts to Rinkeby, so we need a public and private key for that as well. This repository gives you a handy script to go ahead and do just that. Once you have a new Rinkeby wallet address, you need to go ahead and make sure it has Ether in its account. You can do this by transferring from another Rinkeby account or using the public Rinkeby faucet. The last step before deploying is we need to create an Infura API key. Infura is a public Ethereum node that allows you to run Ethereum transactions without setting up your own node. Go to infura.io to create your own account, create an application, and obtain an API key. Finally, we can deploy to Rinkeby. To go through these examples, you could use the Loom.js library to code it up yourself, but luckily Loom has provided a handy command line utility for doing just that. The first thing we need to do is let the transfer gateway Oracle know about the link between the contracts deployed on Rinkeby, the contracts deployed on the Loom dApp chain, as well as the respective wallet accounts. We can do this manually by calling a function on the Loom dApp chain transfer gateway contract, the signed message using our Rinkeby address and the hashes for the contracts we deployed. In this case, we're just gonna use the handy command line utility we can call map contracts for both token and coin, and then map accounts. Next, let's mint some ERC721 tokens on Rinkeby. Now that we have three tokens, let's deposit the first one, the transfer gateway. We can check our balances using token balance, the C flag to note the chain we want to work with. First, let's check Ethereum. As you can see, we have two tokens on the Rinkeby network. Next, let's check the testnet or ext dev. And you can see that we have one token on the dApp chain. We can also see that the transfer gateway on Rinkeby is also holding one token. Now let's deposit some ERC-20 coins. We are automatically issued 1 billion coins, so we can start sending coins right away. When we check our balance on the Ethereum network, we can see we have a little less than 1 billion. When we check the dApp chain, we can see 120. When we check the transfer gateway contract on Rinkeby, we also see 120. Now let's reverse the process and withdraw our tokens from the dApp chain back to Rinkeby. We can use the withdraw token command to withdraw the token that we deposited earlier. When we check Ethereum, we see that we have three tokens. When we check the dApp chain, we see we have zero now. When we check the gateway contract on Rinkeby, we also have zero. 
Now let's withdraw some coins. We can use withdraw coin and we're going to withdraw 60. When we check Ethereum, we see that our balance has gone up by 60. When we check the DAP chain, we can see that we still hold 60, but it's also 60 less than 120. When we check the gateway contract on Rinkeby, we also see that it still holds 60. And that's it. As you can see, it's fairly simple to transfer assets back and forth from the Ethereum network to Loom DAP chains. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them down below. Also feel free to check out the full length article on Loom's official documentation website. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.